You're listening to The Wrestling Philosophy Show, where we talk wrestling perspectives and beliefs. Check us out on social media, including video shows on YouTube and audio on podcast platforms. Welcome to show 23 with Buck Watkins. He is the head coach for Fraser High School in PA and has traveled to 41 states while doing camps. His camps focus on small towns and leg attack finishes. He is a wrestling mindset coach and shares his persistent approach to the sport. All right, joined today with Buck Watkins of Buck Watkins Wrestling. How you doing today, Coach? I'm doing well, sir. Doing very well. I thank you for having me on this podcast. Uh, it's an honor. I've been listening to your show the past couple episodes. Just started a couple days ago, and I'm grateful to be on here. No, nah, I'm glad you uh, glad you reached out. Glad we connected, I should say. And uh, you know, looking forward to hearing your story. Um, you know, definitely uh, connecting with a lot of people in the wrestling world, which is always a good thing and hearing their stories. And, and I'm just glad I can be part of sharing it. So tell, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. I'm a head wrestling coach at a small little town in, of, in Pennsylvania called Periopolis. It's called Frazier High School. I just started high school wrestling four years ago. And we've been growing ever since, you know, it started. We just had a young man who was a two-time Pennsylvania State champ, and he signed with the University of Lehigh. He's now a freshman. I also travel the country, been to 41 different states, going to small little towns, helping the sport of wrestling grow. And I'm also a wrestling mindset coach. I help teams and individuals gain confidence, uh, develop clarity, develop goals, do things that help them prepare to not only be better on the mat but better off the mat as well yeah it's uh that wrestling mindset stuff is really uh really good stuff we had uh at jake hunter on the show i had him in our room uh a year ago and um you know when you you hear it it kind of like you know kind of puts you at ease if you follow the process um you talked a little bit about your high school four years you got a program you know four years in you had a two-time state champ tell us about you know that kind of process were you there from day one at the school or um you know how'd that work out so it was i just finished up coaching in florida and i came back home to pennsylvania and i got a phone call from a parent from two parents asking me to work with their son they had a small program at the time. I believe they had a team at the time, and I was a volunteer coach at the time, and I started working with a young man. He was a freshman, and he was only picked to be a regional qualifier, and he ended up finishing third in the state that year as a freshman. He was, uh, and, you know, won some tournaments, won some matches. People didn't predict him to win, and it from there it flowed. I thought I was only going to stay there that, you know, that season, but it flowed into the head coach stepping down and uh, taking a position. And it's been a really uh, great process as our program continues to grow and get better. Uh, last year we had three regional qualifiers compared to the usual one that we usually had in the past. And this year we're in a new section so i look forward to getting more guys on the podium moving forward this year you know obviously we're i think everybody in the wrestling world's facing you know uncertain times of you know with covid but the goal remains the same i'm just going to get better and you've got to adapt and figure that out how how are you going to get better and obviously like I said, it's been trying times because, you know, being at a high school, you we don't have a high school wrestling room and we can't get in there and roll out mats or be allowed in the facility yet. But time's coming and we're going to get back into it and start rolling. Yeah, so where's so where you, you roll the mats out in the gym or cafeteria? Or um, we have a small little cafeteria. We've been rolling the mats out the past four years. You know, it's kind of, you know, you adapt you Mm -hmm. figure it out and obviously the thing about living here kids have a lot of access to good club wrestling 
And so after practice, uh, more and more of my kids are starting to go to club. So it's truly a benefit for my program. It's a benefit for me because my kids are, you know, wanting to get better on their own. Wrestling's an individual sport. And, you know, when I came in here, in just to with that young man, I knew that he had the potential. He just needed that missing piece. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, you're missing that small little piece of the puzzle because it takes everybody. It takes a high school coach. It takes a club coach. It takes parents. It takes support from teammates. It takes, you know, it takes everybody, administration. Everybody worked together. Everybody's and, – and has kept working together, I should say. And that's why – our program has continued to grow and continued to develop to be, be better. Nice. Nice. So for our listeners, what kind of, what part of the state are you in, in PA and what kind of clubs are on around you? Um, we are in Western Pennsylvania here. We're in the heart of the WPIL. We have quest wrestling, young guns, one shot, Rob Waller's all American wrestling club. Uh, there's rough house. There's a couple others in Pittsburgh, OMP. Um, you know, there's a lot of great coaching and the thing about it is, and there's a uh, compound still city. Sorry. One thing that you have to realize is, is you have to, as a high school coach, you really got to be open-minded because all my kids go to different clubs. They have different styles of wrestling. And when people ask me what club I should go to, uh, my answer is always find the club that you enjoy. Find mm-hmm. the right fit for you. There's a lot of clubs in the area that have great coaching and you want to make sure you're, you know, you have the right partners. You and the coach have a good relationship, have a good bond. And obviously for me, I live five minutes away, five to 10 minutes away from Rob Waller's all American wrestling club. So, you know, there's always, I can always go in there and you know drop in sometimes you know, watch the technique is you bring, you know, they bring in clinicians for camps or there's other clubs down the road as well that bring in clinicians. So you always, as a high school coach, I think it's important to always evolve because club wrestling has brought wrestling to a whole nother level. And I think, I think that's important because when you're coaching high school kids at Russell club, they got to be able to work. They got to be able to trust you in the corner. Right. And if they don't trust you in a corner or feel that you know enough, you know, they're going to start questioning you and then they'll start questioning, you know, themselves a little bit. But if they trust you and they believe in what you do, everything just focuses together. And there's always, I always do my best to have good correlation with the clubs in the area because obviously all my kids go to different clubs and it's important you know, hey, what are you, what do you think he needs to work on? Well, I thought this, or, you know, hey, I thought this, you know, I thought this would work better. You know, those types of, or, you know, those types of talks. Because, obviously, wrestling is team sport, but when you get into the postseason, it becomes individual, and you have to make sure you fulfill each individual's needs. And it's not, and it's not easy by any means. Right. Because, again, everybody has a different style. Everybody has a different personality. Those types of things come into play. And that's why I feel that leadership is very important. It's something that I personally study a lot is leadership's qualities and skills. And, and I always uh, read how to handle different situations. Okay, cool. Um, can you talk a little bit about your camp? you know, camp system and you travel in the States, um, you know, what States you like to hit, what ones you'd like, you would like to hit. And I guess how you got started with that. Um, so it was 2015. I, it was like April. I was a teacher at a small rural school in North Carolina. And, you know, obviously you only get paid 10 months out of the year. And I was like, man, I got my summers off. I, I gotta do something. So I started on Instagram. It was like, I don't know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Started shooting messages out to different clubs I was following. And two clubs reached back out to me, uh, one in Louisiana and one in 
Colorado Springs area, Fountain, Colorado. And I went to two. And then I was like, well, I'll start trying to promote on Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, see what happens. Then I started getting more and more camps. Uh, started doing bigger camps too. I let, uh, last two years I've been doing uh, Iron Sharpens Iron, where they have like okay. between 500 to 1,000 kids each year. Uh, you know, I was guest clinician counselor there. And, but I mostly focus on small town wrestling because I coached at a small town. Uh, and I coached at a small town in North Carolina. And so that's really been my focus to help bring good wrestling in these small towns to people who don't, I don't want to say they have the financial ability, but, you know, I just helping them out. And uh, I've, I've traveled to 41. I just finished up uh, going to Montana to a really good club called uh, Legends of Gold in Montana. It's an okay. affiliate of Legends of Gold in, in South Dakota. But that's really been my main focus. Uh, so when I first did these camps, you know, I kind of just did it on the fly. And then I was like, you know what? I got to develop something that's different. I got to have my own niche. Like, I got to I gotta have my own thing. So, like I said, my focus is small town, mostly rural places. Uh, my main philosophy in wrestling, I think, a couple things is, one, I'm a big believer in finishing. I think the hardest thing in wrestling is to finish. I watch people get to legs, and then all of a sudden, they face an opponent who's done something they've never seen before or, or something like that, and it kind of refers to life. You run into an obstacle, and, and you're like, I can't finish this. I got to stop. And I teach how to finish, how to push through how to get through that wall, how to get through that barrier. Now, obviously, sometimes there's tech, you know, a lot of times there's techniques that you can use. But sometimes you just got to bite down and just get after it. Just mm -hmm. bite down and just throw down. You know, let it go, let it fly. And that's something that I really, you know, my philosophy is not to be motivated. It's to become driven. That's that's my whole philosophy is, is – help people become driven because you know motivation's fleeting it comes and goes you see it every mm -hmm. january 1st people hit the gym three or four weeks all of a sudden they're like oh, i'm done you know they get right. out of the gym drive to a mcdonald's they sit past mm -hmm. mcdonald's in a day and all of a sudden they just break but when you become driven you become some people will call it an obsession mm -hmm. so i really got focused the past five years on developing finishes from, you know, double leg, high crotch, uh, single leg. And it's really helped a lot of kids. And I also developed my own style on top. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in, in riding wrist. Uh, you know, there's only two ways to keep people down. You either ride wrist or, or you ride legs. And I'm a big believer in riding wrist. So I've kind of got into that. And that's what kind of authentic it's kind mm -hmm. of i put my people ask me hey what's the name of your uh of your wrestling it's buck walking wrestling like uh, you know it's mm -hmm. authentic it's my it's my name it's something that you know i put my name on it and it's you, right. if you don't do a good job people are gonna know who you are right that's a good point so so you know it's not like i took something from someone else uh, I just I just believe in being authentic and you know I back up what I believe in you know and uh, you know obviously I promote a little bit on social media and things but mm -hmm. it's because that that holds myself accountable right because people are like hey this guy's saying this and he's out doing this but no it you know it helps me hold myself accountable no I, I talked off here just said uh you know, Cliff Fretwell on, um, you know, a few days ago or so. And, uh, you know, he mentioned you'd be a good, good one to have on with your mission and journey of, you know, across the States. So do you have, a, you know, you mentioned you kind of focus on small towns. Do you kind of have a favorite small town that you've been to that kind of like, like, wow, this place is pretty cool. Um, no, I've had some 
quite the uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing about doing one thing about doing this is I always wanted to do it my way. Mm -hmm. I was gonna do it my way, mm -hmm. and uh, people are like, "Hey, you, you can't do that." No, I'm gonna do it my way. I, I it, you know, what you say or what you think don't phase me, mm -hmm. and I think that kind of uh, kind of rubs off on my wrestlers a little bit. It's like, well, you know, I, it don't matter. You say I can't do it, well, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've slept in my truck instead of hotels, save people money. I've I've driven, you know, 12 hours through the night to make it somewhere. Mm -hmm. I've I've driven down dirt roads in the backwoods of West Virginia. That's and the wrestler's mentality, over. right? Yeah, and you know, it's it is what it is. You know, you mm -hmm. you know, anytime, any place, anywhere, you know, anyone, mm -hmm. you know, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And but each of them has has brought something different to the table. Uh one of the coolest things about being in small towns, you you get to know people on a more mm -hmm. personal level. Uh, one of the coolest things I ever experienced uh, was last year in Idaho, went bear hunting with dogs. And I promise you, this guy I went with, he's like the dog whisperer. <laughs> I mean, these dogs, these dogs run for miles. And the other cool thing about it is his boy not only wrestles, but his boy rides bulls. So, this, so, so, so these, so these are kind of people that I like run into and last, you know, last weekend in Montana, I got to ride horseback up a mountain with like, that was like this wide and I'm scared of heights, but you know, you just gonna, you just gonna get up on a horse and let us do his thing. And, you know, you look down the side of a mountain, like, well, if I fall over too far, I'm going. Yeah. But those are the type. I don't know. There's something about being out west. They're still mm -hmm. an old school way of living, and you see a lot of tough kids. But there's not the the technique that. So to me, I'm just trying to bring that out there to them. Trying. Nice. You know, obviously nice. there's a lot of different styles. You see a different style between Ohio and Pennsylvania, but there's definitely right. a different style of wrestling between here and out in the West, not Midwest. Okay. Uh, so been hunting on your, on your trips. Yeah. You, well, you have any other stories of hunting or anything you, you shot? Uh, I've gone fishing as well. Uh, okay. I always go, uh, in South Dakota. I always go with this guy. He, he, I don't know if he wrestled or not, but his boy doesn't wrestle or anything, but he actually is a, is a fishing and hunting god, South Dakota. Okay. And he, he he's kind of like me. He went all in on on doing what he's doing, mm -hmm. and he's been very successful at it. So every time I'm in town, he always takes me out. Nice. So it's so it's uh, been you know interesting to say the least. And I went fly fishing as well in Montana for, for the first time. That was a little bit different for me. That was the first time experience. But it's all about learning. You learn mm -hmm. different things. And and I think I take some of what these people say, and I'm like, I could use this when I'm coaching. Mm -hmm. Because the same – same everybody wants to win. You know, they won't mm -hmm. be the best at what they're doing. And I think that's uh, that's important. I think that's an important part. you, you got to be a competitor. you got to have that. That's why I always say, you know, forget being motivated. Be driven. Because mm -hmm. you have right. a drop. You have mm -hmm. a deep – drive that nobody else has right yeah talk about driving uh hunting and motivation you know uh you know you watch the metcalf series you know he, he talked about how you got into hunting and you know just some of his stories are pretty cool i'm not sure if you got to see it or not but it was it was pretty interesting um you talked you've hit what 41 of the 50 states what what states do you have less left on the list I have to go to vermont I have to go to rhode island I have to go to Washington, I have to go to Oregon, I have to go to uh, Utah, I have to go to Nevada, Alaska, and Hawaii. I think, okay. I think that's about it. You know, I've touched everywhere else pretty much. There's a, I'm going to keep doing this, mm -hmm. um, or, or at least somewhere, you know, shape or form. But um, I'm actually looking, you know, the next couple of years to have my own wrestling club. 
not sure where yet. Okay. I uh, want to, I have this idea of a building and, and what I want to uh, invo- involve in my wrestling club. I, I don't want it to be the norm. I want it to be, like I said, I have this philosophy, like I'm going to do, I'm going to do it my own way. Right. No, that's awesome. And, and, and if it fails, it fails, you know, right. but, but I've learned if you want to be, if you want to be good and you want to go through perseverance, you have to be persistent with it. And I'm just going to keep hammering. I'm going to keep knocking at the door. And that's the thing that I've learned the most value, you know, to be a valuable asset and being successful is being persistent keep mm-hmm. hammering, keep knocking at the door. And I've, so I take a lot of uh, different traits from people that I what either listen to on podcasts or I follow on social media. And one of my favorites is this guy by the name of Cameron Haynes. He's a mm-hmm. ultra marathon runner and right. he's like a top three bow hunter in the world, you know, mm-hmm. top five, whatever. But the guy way, d- runs a marathon like every day or something like that, like early in the right. morning or throughout his day. And he's always shooting his bow. Like, right. it doesn't – like, he doesn't have to do this to hunt, but he wants to become the best at what he does. Mm-hmm. And he goes in these long tracks, and he always wants to be in shape. So he shoots his bow every day. You know, mm-hmm. who knows how many times he's failed hunting or how many times he's failed at practice, but he does it every day. Mm-hmm. And for him to get where he's at, he talks about it a lot is, you know, from where he started with like one car, you know, just went all in on this and, you know, this is where he is. And I think that's one thing that people don't realize is you have to work. And I'm mm-hmm. talking every day and you have to do something that involves what you want to be good at. I'm passionate about sport of wrestling. So every day I'm involved in it some way, somehow I'm either talking to individuals about, you know, developing confidence, you know, clarity, setting goals, or I'm studying film or I'm, you know, learning new techniques or something, or I'm reading books on leadership or, or something to better my craft. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that successful people do. They borrow things from other sports or other people that are successful you have any uh you said your wrestling mindset coach you just touched on books do you have a favorite uh book on leadership um yeah i i'm a huge jocko wilnick fan okay i I read his book uh dichotomy of leadership and how to you know engage with people and i read his book extreme ownership you know owning everything taking responsibility of what happens whether you know you plan either be successful or it fails. And obviously, you know, with the wrestling mindset, we always talk about, you know, job wood, care water, mm-hmm. job med cap. And, you know, I always read the book, you know, leaders eat last, you know, pound in the stone, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And you just, um, it helps you develop, become a better coach. I think that's one thing that a lot of people lack is leadership skills. You know, there's a lot of people that teach technique in the sport of wrestling. But I think if you really want to be a successful coach, you uh, you just become better. Mm-hmm. All right. So being from PA, are you a Penn State fan or who's who's your college team? I am uh, as far as what, wrestling or football? Yeah, college wrestling. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I'm actually a huge uh, – Northern Iowa fan. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you why. Yeah, I think that their style is uh, is kind of what I'm into. Mm-hmm. It's a small town. It's a small college wrestling program. Competing with the big guys, putting out national champs. Uh, you know, all Americans. I think the work ethic, is, the coaching staff's work ethic. I've been there one time. Um, you know, I got to see the wrestling room. It's got a – in the uh, uh, West Gym, it's got like an environment where you want to go out there and wrestle. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it's – you're going to – you're going to bite down on your teeth and you're just going to get after it. And I think that – and one thing that I see, and this happens in wrestling, but this also happens in life, fear – 
freezes people. Courage frees people. And you see the best wrestlers, they have a lot of courage. Mm-hmm. So they wrestle freely. But the people who, you know, have that fear of, oh, no, I got to wrestle in front of this crowd or I got to wrestle this person with this singlet on, they freeze. They freeze mm-hmm. when it counts. And so that's one thing that I try to encourage and instill at, you know, not only my coaching high school kids and youth kids and middle school kids, but as I travel the country, I teach them how to develop courage and to stay driven and to keep pushing. Nice. Nice. Um, I usually ask people what kind of rule changes or anything, you know, unwritten rules of wrestling. Do you have either? a rule change you'd like to see at the high school or college level or uh, you know a lot of people are going to argue with me on this but i think there needs to be riding time in high school that's just really okay yeah i think that there needs to be a riding time i think that that eliminates uh you know a lot of overtimes you know i think if you can't get off the bottom i think you should get a point every minute Mm -hmm. that you can't get off the bottom i think Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, you watch a guy rod a guy for four minutes. He only gets one point. No, you know, obviously he gets points for turning. But if a guy just lays there and, you know, he just wants to stay there and not get turned, you know, maybe he's moving a little bit, not mm-hmm. not to stall, you know, and you ride him for three minutes or whatever, you should get a point for each minute. That's just me. And, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people argue with me on that, you know, fight me on that. Again, that's just my opinion. Right. I'm not here to say I'm right or wrong. I think that's another thing that, you know, hurts the sport of uh, wrestling sometimes. We, we find people who have egos. Right. I think that's the biggest downfall of, of, you know, any sport and coaching is egos. And that's the thing, you know, I don't have an ego. I'm a pretty quiet guy, kind of stay low profile, you know. A lot of people – so it's kind of funny um, – you never know who's like paying attention, you know, to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I don't expect a big crowd to be paying attention to what I'm doing or whatever. But once in a while, I'll get a, a college coach to send me a message or something to say, "Man, you're really doing a good job." You know, I enjoy following your your, your adventures and things, and you know, to like what you're doing, developing kids and stuff like that. So it's kind of you know, to me, it's it's I don't know something I take. I don't take it for granted. So I'm mm-hmm. proud of. It. Again, I'm kind of low profile. I don't have a whole lot of emotion. I don't really have like a a persona per se. Mm-hmm. Right. What you see is what you get. You know, any time, any place, anyone. You know, let's do this. Nice, nice. Where did I guess where I didn't ask. Where did you get your wrestling started, and when did you kind of know you wanted to get, get into coaching? Uh so I kind of, uh, you know, I wrestled. I started wrestling when I was little in Pennsylvania Mm -hmm. and I wrestled through high school and then I wrestled division two in college and where I moved uh I wrestled at Seton Hill University here in Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania so newly it's not that old of a D2 school it's probably about 10 15 it's about 15 years now you know we start back about 2006 and after I graduated I moved to Texas I was grad assistant and that was my first time I'd ever been involved in women's wrestling because they have men and women wrestling at the college level. Mm-hmm. So that was a good experience for me because I had to be around women's wrestling, which I think is great. You know, it's going to mm-hmm. help wrestling grow in general. But I actually, it's kind of funny. So I was living in Plainview, Texas, and there's a man by the name of Leonard Garcia. Okay, fought MMA, WEC. And he lived with Cowboy uh, Don Cerrone. When oh. Cowboy had just newly had built the ranch. You know, they had moved in together. And they had an open spot for a room. So I moved in. Um, so I packed my bags and I moved to Edgewood, New Mexico. That was from May until May, June, July, August, September, October. Until November. So, you know, six, seven months. And... I, you know, got involved there and I was helping some guys and, you know, once and helping them out and things. And I'd taken a fight, which I won. It was just an amateur fight. I'd won. But I, 
I knew that that wasn't like a long term thing because mm -hmm. let me tell you something. You sometimes you face the reality like these guys have a different mentality than you. Do. They got mm -hmm. a they got a different you know I don't know thing to them. I don't know what it is. It's just you know got like when you see somebody walk on a wrestling mat that you're like that guy is gonna go to the next level. Mm -hmm. They just have this you know swag to them and. Right. It was a great learning experience because it opened my eyes to a whole lot. I was in, it was the first time I'd in a long time that I'd really started developing confidence in myself because I was doing something that I knew that nobody else was doing at the time mm -hmm. that I'd been around. And I'm around these group of athletes. They're not, they want to win. Like they're fighting for money. Right. They're not doing this for a part time job. They're not, you know, this is their full time life. This is what they want to do. And being around, and I learned that being around, you know, a group of people who are that driven is what's going to help you be successful. Mm -hmm. And so when I got done, I actually, uh, I have a master's of education and I applied for a job in North Carolina. And I moved to a school called Mount Tabor in Winston-Salem. And they hadn't had a winning season in 10 years uh, before I got there. And I was the assistant coach. But the head coach actually tore his bicep. And so I, he took over the paperwork. I took over everything else. And we had a winning season. Nice. And then there was a job opening about 30 minutes, I don't know, from the school in a small town called King, North Carolina, at a high school called West Oaks. And I got the head coaching job there. And I walked in there, and there we had about seven or eight kids with a bunch of seniors. And, you know, it's all we had on our team. But we ended up having a pretty good record that year, too. But I wanted more. I knew that this was a small town. There were some tough kids. They just need – and we're wrestling in North Carolina. And I knew that if we had numbers and we learned, you know, better the basics and things, we would have success. And that next year, I got about close, about 25, 26 kids out on the team. We had a full oh, lineup. Wow. Um, I won coach of the year that year. And we lost, we lost three duels. We went 21 and three. We lost three duels. We lost twice to the team that won the state title. We faced them at a dual meet tournament. And then we, Luck of the draw, we faced them first round of the playoffs, and oh. we ended up losing. And then, you know, uh, then I moved to Florida for six months. I just had a, there was an opportunity there, and I didn't really care for living in Oviedo, which is right outside of Disney World. So I moved back home, and I've been in Frazier ever since, and it's been quite the journey. Um, you know, no, the schools never had wrestling. They started the youth program about 10 years ago. So nobody's really had wrestling experience in town until now. And, you know, when you compete in Western Pennsylvania, you're not only competing against people who wrestle now, you're competing against schools with tradition mm -hmm. who have wrestling rooms, who have, you know, resources. Kid, guys have gone off to college, have come, you know, wrestled in college, right. become All-Americans. And so it's, it's, you know, satisfying to see the program growing and the kids wanting to get better. And like I said, with the club resources, it's been very helpful. But the community, the administration, all the parents, you know, working together has been very helpful. And, you know, it's uh, a lot of big changes are coming, uh, especially in my life. I'm getting ready to be a dad for the first time. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'm getting ready to have a baby boy. He's due November 7th, but I think he's going to come a little earlier. That's awesome. So probably within the next two weeks, i say, but we'll see. But, you know, obviously people are like, well, you're not going to be able to do what you're going to do. It's not that I'm not going to be able to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the way I do it. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, God, family, and wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, God and family come first. So I'm just going to prioritize and take care of business that's that's the importance i think of leadership is prioritizing 
and learning to, uh, I don't, how should I say this? Like the dichotomy of leadership, like putting people in place who are better at mm-hmm. things than you mm-hmm. are. Um, mm-hmm. My assistant coach never wrestled, but he's a math teacher and his boy wrestles. So I'm like, look, man, you're the man with the numbers here. So mm-hmm. you take care of this. I'll take care of this. But that's knowing a person's, you know, weakness and strengths. And you have to identify mm-hmm. those. Right. And the, the program to run smoothly, you have to put people in place where you know that the program will have the most success. No, that's, that's true. That, that's definitely a fact. So, well, well, thanks for your time, coach. Where can they find more information? Uh, what's the you know, best, uh, you know, place to find more information about you if they want to, you know, book one of your camps or, you know, kind of see what you're about. Um, you can actually follow me on Instagram. It's buck underscore Watkins, or you can find me on Twitter at uh, BW mindset coach. Um, uh-huh. on Facebook, uh, Watkins wrestling. It's, cool. Uh, you know, just like I said, pretty plain and simple. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm flashy. Cool. I, you know, obviously I promote about going to different places and all the adventures I do. But, you know, just it's authentic. Right. You know, blue, blue collar, blue collar kind of work ethic. Right, and, right. And keep moving forward, you know. Um, mm-hmm. That's one thing that I, one thing that I always tell people, you know, like I said earlier, uh, fear freezes a person. You know, courage frees a person. And I always tell my wrestlers, you know, you're going to go out. You want to be the best. You got to. So there's an old movie. Um, it's called They Die With Their Boots On. And it's about General Arm, General George Armstrong Custer. And in the beginning, he's uh, a leader in the Civil War. And he keeps, you know, sending uh, reinforcements. And he says, you know, we're going to ride to the sound of gunfire. And that's my mentality. We're going to ride to the sound of gunfire. We're going to go get it. Nice. And that's one thing that I think that I have that philosophy even when it comes to doing wrestling camps. Somebody needs help. I'm going to ride to the sound of gunfire to help them and get better. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking time. Looking forward to seeing your journey. and you know, completing all 50 states and now, you know, congratulations on um, being a dad here soon. That's awesome. I greatly appreciate it, sir. And I thank you for having me on. Yeah. Thanks.